So now we come to the last part basically here we'll be discussing about what exactly is an electric dipole. As I mentioned at the end of the last part that an electric dipole consists of two poles. You need to have a positive charge pole and you have two negative charge pole. Why do we call it a dipole? Because both these charges have to be equal in magnitude. It's just that they will have opposite signs but the magnitude is going to be exactly equal. When you place these two charges at a particular distance from each other, that results into a formation of a dipole. We are going to study its properties and how exactly it is affected in the presence and absence of an external electric field. So students, moving on, we now try to understand about what exactly is an electric dipole. As the name itself suggests, electric dipole, obviously it has to deal with, deal with the electric charges. Dipole means there are two poles, positive pole and the negative pole. So the force of interaction that exists between this is what we are going to understand. In reality, you would see dipoles at many places. For instance, if you take just an HCl molecule, in an HCl molecule itself, chlorine being such an electronegative element, is going to pull the electrons towards itself. So even though it's covalently bonded, what is going to happen? The electron cloud is going to shift towards the chlorine and hydrogen would acquire a partial positive charge and chlorine would acquire a partial negative charge. So that's a kind of dipole that is what is known as a dipole. It exists everywhere in nature. You will see magnetic dipoles as well when we talk about magnetism. But there is a subtle difference between electric dipole and a magnetic dipole. We will see later on in magnetism that magnetic dipoles it exists basically at North Pole and South Pole. But you cannot have magnetic monopoles. Magnetic monopoles means you cannot have a standalone North Pole or a standalone South Pole. Always, however small you have the magnet, you are always going to have one North Pole, one South Pole together. But in the case of an electric dipole, you can have a standalone positive charge and a standalone negative charge. So that is the basic difference between an electric dipole and a magnetic dipole. So let's try and understand more on it. So when we talk about an electric dipole, so electric dipole basically consists of a pair of equal and opposite point charges. These are separated by some small distance. As you can see here, some molecule comes in. When it tries to occupy both the places, it becomes stressed. So what basically means that the center of positive charge is not equal to the center of the negative charge. From the positive charges, you have the lines that are emanating from the negative charges, they are getting in. So this is how a dipole actually exists. Moving on, because when we are trying to find out an electric dipole, there is going to be some amount of electric field. There are two ways to find out, one along the axis and one perpendicular to it, that is along the equatorial plane. So when you try to find out the on the axis of the dipole itself, so if you try to find out the electric field, so what you are going to do, there is going to be the net electric field that you are going to find out. So net electric field is going to be a vector sum because as you can see, this distance between the two charges between plus Q and minus Q is equal to 2A. So what you will get that this distance is going to be A and similarly, if you try to find it out from here, so what you are going to get, you are going to get the net value of the electric field. So the net electric field is going to be a vector sum of the electric field which is in minus Q and the electric field with the plus Q charge. You need to sum it up, that's going to give you the net value of the electric field. When you sum it up and you take the approximation that R is much much more than A, so this is what you are going to get. It's very easy to understand how to get this particular factor because the value of the electric field due to the minus Q charge is going to be given by because you are trying to find out at this particular point P, right? And this has been found from the center of it. So effectively, this distance is going to be equal to A. So the, from the minus Q charge, that is going to be equal to K Q, or I should be writing it as small Q, divided by is going to be equal to R plus A whole square. And similarly, E, Q, this is going to be equal to K, Q divided by R minus A whole square. You are required to add it up accordingly. Either you add up, is you place one with a negative charge, one with a positive charge, or you are going to subtract 
you, where you do not place the negative or the positive charges either way right once you do that that's going to give you the net value of the electric field so the net value of the electric field after an approximation is going to come to this in a similar manner what you do in this particular case this is when you are doing in a perpendicular direction so if i say that this angle is also equal to theta so you get an electric field value here you get an electric field value here this angle is going to be theta and so will be this so the net electric field value is going to be nothing but twice of electric field either due to plus q or minus q irrespective of that because the magnitude is going to remain the same and there is going to be a factor of cos theta and how will you find out the value of cos theta as you can see the vertical distance is r this distance between them is 2a therefore this is equal to a and so uh, the hypotenuse is going to be equal to r square plus a square so you need to put in the value of the cos theta factor that's going to give you the net result so the points on the equatorial plane at a point on the dipole axis you're going to get a value somewhat like this this is after an approximation similarly at a point on the equatorial plane you're going to get this so this is basically the result that you're going to obtain here p is nothing but the dipole moment so dipole moment is defined as q q is the charge times distance between the two two poles is taken as 2a now when the this particular dipole you place it in an electric field obviously it's going to face something known as a torque because if you just try to understand it this is the dipole that we have right now this is the positive pole this is the negative pole the positive pole is going to be pulled toward by the force and similarly the negative is going to be the negative charge is going to be pulled in the opposite direction so that results in kind of tussle so that tussle results into a torque so torque is defined as as we know torque is equals to r so r cross f so the distance between the two charges times the force the perpendicular force that results into the value of the torque so the value of the torque you get something as twice of q that is the charge into the electric field into d by 2 obviously the force because the point of rotation takes place from here either here d is nothing but 2a so the value of d is nothing but 2a so if you simplify it so this is going to be the value of torque that you will get and while doing so while doing so by making a change in angle by a factor of d theta you can get what is known as the work done so we are going to come to the case of work done or potential energy in a very short time so this i have tried to relate it again so this gives you the p cross p sine theta and by the vector cross product we know that this is nothing but p cross e so relating it further if we try to integrate over this complete angle that gives us the potential energy of the dipole right hopefully you understood the basic parts this this tells you about what are the basic things that you need to understand before you try attempting any particular problem these are the gist this is basically the gist of all the topics that are there important in this particular chapter Please go through it and then try to attempt the problems which have been discussed separately in the video solutions. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned. Hopefully you would have enjoyed listening to whatever we have discussed in the module. Now, if you still feel that there are any particular doubts that you have, so please visit our site www.askattens.com. In this, go to the discussion board. Here you can find all the topics relevant to your questions you can post your doubts in these relevant topics and how exactly you're going to do it go to the right hand side corner of your screen as you can see you can select the category the categories are defined here you can select your category type down your question you can use your mathematical symbols as well else if you have the question in the form of an image you can attach the image post it we can assure you that the questions would be moderated and answered between 24 to 48 hours after you post it. So keep posting and happy posting. Thank you. So students, we learned about what exactly is an electric dipole. Then we understood that what we can find out, that is what are the electric fields that can be found from this particular dipole. That is, there is going to be an axial position and equatorial position that helps us in finding out the values of the electric field with respect to this dipole. Now, when you place this electric dipole in an external electric field, 
it is going to align it is going to try aligning itself along the direction or opposite to the direction of the applied electric field that results into the formation of a torque using this torque we can further find out how much is the work that is being done when the dipole tries to align itself along the direction of electric field obviously there needs to be some work that needs to be done that amount of work that is done is stored in the form of potential energy we found this out so effectively speaking we started off with the case of a, an object that is a matter we went microscopically deeper into it and found that there are two types of charges positive charge negative charge any object can be classified further into two parts basically a positively charged object or a negatively charged object in nature the total amount of charge remains conserved since the total amount of charge remains conserved you need to charge one object with respect to other the best way to do it is by induction now when you have two charges obviously there is going to be some amount of force there are two types of forces that exist like you have two types of charges there are two types of forces that exist one is an attractive force one is a repulsive force when you have these two forces which you can experience you need to define a mathematical formula for that the ex best example of that is the coulomb's law when you talk about electrostatics is the coulomb's law that holds forth but if you have multiple charges then what you are going to do you have to superimpose them so the superimposition helps you in finding out the net value of the electric force but supposing you just want a amount of force that any particular charge exerts on any other object that is what is our electric field the electric field is nothing but the force exerted by any particular charge on any other now after defining about the electric field we need to identify what are the different types of charge distributions so charges can either be distributed over a line over a plane over a area over a surface or a over a volume these are the different types of charge distributions once we know how much is the charge that has been distributed or what is the amount of charge and how it has been distributed we can go further and find out what is the electric field due to a particular area that is how many electric field lines are passing through a particular area so that tells us about the electric flux knowing the electric flux we can go back and find out the electric field due to the different types of surfaces that we have that is using the gauss law so that basically tells us about broadly speaking what all we have in the topic of electrostatics stay tuned to understand more about physics chemistry math and biology lectures with us